Hey there friends, it's Matt here from pianoblog.com checking in with you today. We're going to talk about adult beginner piano lessons and how to make those successful. And you're going to love this video even if you're not a total beginner, even if you studied for a while, because what I'm going to talk about in this video are eight things that I've found make successful piano students. And these are things I've learned in over 20 years of teaching and working with hundreds and hundreds of students in person and thousands of students online. So if you want to learn the piano or if you're studying the piano, hang around because these things can make or break your success as a piano student. Now before we get to those, just a really quick plug. If you're just starting out, you really ought to check out my free beginner piano lessons. I'm going to put a link below and they're totally free. Uh, you learn how to play Ode to Joy and all sorts of things and uh, thousands of people have actually used these. If you don't want to use the link below, you can just go to pianoblog.com and check out my free material there. So let's get going with eight things that will really make you successful as an adult beginner or if you have already studied for a while. So here are the things. Number one, successful piano students are ear oriented. What does this mean? This means that successful students are always trying to have a concept of in their mind of what they want something to sound like. So you want to always try to be developing this sound concept. Just like if you were a visual artist, you would want to be developing a concept of what something looks like and then trying to recreate that. You want to be thinking, how does this sound? An unsuccessful piano student will play something and then hear that it's wrong and then they'll keep kind of going back over and over that. But a successful piano student will have an idea in their mind of what they want something to sound like and they'll try to recreate that at the piano. It's a subtle distinction. So always work on ha having that ear orientation. You're always listening to what's coming out of the piano. You're really just trying to refine your sense of listening. And what you'll find if you start off down this path is that as you progress, your ear Ear gets stronger and stronger and you're going to start to hear things that you would never heard before. Number two, successful people or successful piano students automatize. Now what does this mean to automatize something? It means to make it automatic so you don't have to think about it. You see a lot of times when people start out at the piano they try and do too much at once. They just really want to jump in and what that means is they don't rev review and repeat patterns. So simple things like learning five finger patterns or learning how to play even one key at the piano, they don't repeat this enough and so it doesn't become automatic. And then as they progress at the piano, they're always having to go back and think over and over again about how to do these simpler things. In other words, you have to repeat things enough that mental bandwidth is freed up so that as you get into more and more complex stuff, uh, the earlier stuff is automatic. So successful piano students do a lot of repetition. Even if they think they know something, they'll just keep repeating it and repeating it because deep down in those kind of deeper layers of the subconscious, that's making it more and more automatic. Number three is successful piano students look for patterns and harmonies. And what this means as you study, if you're just starting out, you might not know what's meant by harmonies, but you're going to find that there are patterns in the pieces of music you play. And you want to always be looking for these patterns so that you're not constantly reinventing the wheel. So as you start out at the piano, start to look for little patterns and then see if you can progress and use them in future pieces. And you want to ask your teacher or do some reading or self-study on uh, music theory so that you can apply one set of music theory to the next thing that you're learning. Number four, successful piano students understand before playing. And this kind of goes back to point one where you have this, this mental concept, this sound in your mind that you want to create. But unsuccessful students are too hurried. For example, when they're trying to read through a piece, they won't take the time to think about each note before they play it. They're too much oriented towards the goal of like, I want to get through this piece, I want to get through this piece. And they're not enough just kind of going in a very orderly fashion, thinking ahead, then playing, thinking ahead, 
than playing. It seems like it's slower at first, but if you have this habit of understanding before playing, over time what happens is your mental pattern becomes correct. In other words, you have a habit of having the right mental pattern, which is understanding the music, then playing it. Number five, successful piano students understand hierarchy. That means they don't try and jump ahead too quickly. A successful piano student will understand that just like in mathematics, you have to learn the simpler forms of mathematics before you can learn advanced calculus. In piano, you can't jump ahead to a super complex piece before you've learned the basics. And I've seen over and over again where adult students will come to me and be having tons of trouble because they tried to jump ahead too fast and they develop all sorts of bad habits, they're confused, they, they haven't automated enough. It's really a hierarchy. You wanna go step by step. That doesn't mean that you can't push yourself a little bit, but you have to make sure that you're not way out of bounds because that's not where learning occurs. Number six is successful piano students learn to focus on problem areas. And what this means is an unsuccessful student will often start at the beginning of a piece, play through the entire piece, and there will be several mistakes within that playing that need worked on. But they never go back and focus on the problem areas in the piece. And a successful student will actually learn to hone in on where those little problem areas are, even if it's just half a measure or less, and repeat that, repeat that, repeat that until it becomes automatic, until they fix the problem. That leads me to number seven, successful piano students look for the big picture. So this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum here. Once you've figured out that little problem, the successful student will then integrate it into the bigger picture. So a lot of unsuccessful students, they'll repeat something maybe over and over, like I gotta fix this, but then they don't integrate it. So this next time they get to that spot in the piece, uh, they have the same problem again. So the secret here is say you've worked on a specific measure in a piece. What you want to do then is take about eight measures or so surrounding that and practice actually getting up to that measure and then kind of clicking on that fixed programming, clicking on the, the correct way of playing as you're playing it in context. So successful piano students are always looking at the broader context while they're focusing on those narrow problems. And number eight, and the one that people really don't wanna hear, but it's the big truth, successful piano students practice. Successful piano students make a habit of practicing every day, even if it's not for hours and hours, even if it's just a little bit, that consistency over time is what pays off. So I've seen this so many times in my private piano teaching and online is the students who have a habit, who have that routine of day after day, week, month, year after year practicing, those are the ones who are successful. The ones who just kind of go at it for a week, but they don't make a habit of it, those are the ones who are unsuccessful. So successful piano students practice. So hey, there are my eight things that I think make a successful piano student. And again, I'm drawing this based on 20 years of piano teaching and working with hundreds of students. If you enjoy this sort of thing, please make sure you check out pianoblog.com. And if you are just getting started, remember I have those free lessons. I have linked to those below, or you'll find them if you just visit pianoblog.com, where I also have all sorts of other free stuff like technique lessons, articles, uh, you name it. There's just a ton of stuff on there. And hey, if you like this YouTube channel, please subscribe, that means a lot to me. Every time I get a subscriber, I notice it, and I notice it every time you comment and you like. So leave a comment, if you have a question, I'll answer it. And I check in pretty frequently here. So if you subscribe and you click on the bell, you're gonna get those updates. It's just a nice way of saying thanks to me. So thanks for watching this far, and I'll see y'all in the next video.